since Regal has uh, updated their firmware to uh, version 107, I thought I'd go to the website and uh, get that version and put it on my version 104 firmware, um, DSA 815TG. This is the site, and there's a place that you can click to uh, get the firmware update request uh, forms and uh, information. The 815 is on uh, 00.01.07, what I'm calling 107. You have to fill out this form and uh, check mark DSA 800 series spectrum analyzers, something that wasn't there uh, earlier when I uh, looked, but is now there. They want all of this information from your uh, spectrum analyzer, which is under uh, system and information. I'd type it in exactly as it is here, uh, spaced with the carries returns and spaces as required, in case they're doing something uh, with automatic uh, for software. I'm going to revisit my uh, cable here. This is the Heliax 50-foot uh, piece, and I've got it connected uh, from the output of the tracking generator and the input of the uh, spectrum analyzer through these adapters and uh, attenuators. This one uh, looks like about a 6 dB coming off of the uh, source and um, the various adapters necessary to get into the cable. And then uh, on the other side, on the receive side of the uh, spectrum analyzer, I've used a 3 dB pad. That's mainly to swamp out any uh, variations caused by these cables in any standing wave that might uh, exist, etc., etc. And of course, I also uh, normalize the whole thing with all the adapters, uh, but without the cable, so that uh, the reference would be to only the cable. As you can see, I am doing a lot better job. The analyzer is doing a lot better job, I, I think, with the uh, ripple here. Of course, part of that might be the uh, 6 and 3 dB pads, but uh, it's a much smoother line and much better calibrated, I believe. Uh, 0.36 at 51 megahertz, 145 is 0.47, 439 is uh, 0.8, uh, 1295 is uh, 1.47. So I think this is a, a much better representation of the loss of the Heliax uh, that I'm testing here than uh, what we were getting before, which is right here. Uh, we had a lot more ripple. It was in the 432 region, which made the measurements there a little bit uh, questionable. Um, and we had 0 0.73, 0 0.84, 1.05, and 1.59 uh, instead of the better uh, um, figures that we were getting uh, with the present one of 0 0.36, 0 0.47, 0 0.79, and 1.47. Again, the old uh, method or firmware, I should say, and method. Uh, and the new firmware is uh, much, much better, much, much cleaner than it was before. So I think this is a uh, uh, definitely a good uh, upgrade. We'll go to 0 to 60 dB in 10 dB increments using the mini circuits uh, 0 to 2000 uh, megahertz uh, fixed BNC attenuators. Here's a uh, the attenuators. We have a 10 dB, a 20 dB, a 30 dB, and then we can take uh, 30 and uh, 10 and make 40, and 30 and 20 and make 50, and then add the 10 dB and make uh, 60 dB to give us a uh, pretty good idea how the, the um, normalization is doing over this uh, dynamic range. So here's the 10 dB. And uh, you'll notice everything's a little bit shy of the 10 dB, 9.6, 9.5, etc., etc. But uh, the peak to peak is only um, totally uh, 1.23, and most of it's on the uh, high side. And you notice that uh, the noise level's pretty far down here uh, in the 70, well, 65 to 78 dB uh, region or so. And so that's that's a good thing because we shouldn't be the leakage. This is the leakage, not the noise level, but the leakage. So it shouldn't be impacting uh, with any beat notes on the 20, uh, 10 dB here. Same with 20. It's, you're quite a few dB above the uh, leakage here. Again, 19.58, 19.53, 19.9, um, 
0.95, which is only a few tenths off, and uh, and so forth all the way across. Notice I'm using a 49 second sweep here, and 30 dB, uh, we're in the same kind of category, a little on the shy side, which is probably the best thing because that means if you see uh, attenuation of 29 dB, it's probably that or slightly more. Anyway, these are the peaks, the worst case peaks, and um, they're pretty good. Not too much a deviation, no, 1.13 there and 1.43 at uh, 40 dB here. Um, and that's at uh, 1,008 megahertz. Uh, so that's that's pretty good. Again, we haven't approached the uh, leakage level yet. 50 dB seems to be about the point that I'd trust the, uh, uh, the, the ripple not to be too terrible. Uh, minus 48.86 to uh, 47.73. Yeah, and so the, the, it's, it's about a dB off uh, or so. And that's uh, starting to make some difference, I think. And of course, when we get to 60, we're only a, uh, somewhere between 5 and uh, 15, 18 dB of uh, uh, signal to interference ratio, if you wish. And so the ripple becomes much worse. But again, it's in the 800, 900 meg region, which doesn't affect us in the ham bands that much. So in that sense, it's good. Next, I uh, thought I'd try the return loss uh, situation with the mini circuit setup DC-20-5 plus a directional coupler, and uh, we use a uh, the same uh, pads we use for uh, for the other uh, uh, circuit we were looking at. Uh, so 3 dB and 6 dB, and um, the load on there right now is a 75 ohm load. There's also a 50 ohm uh, load with a blue cap there. Those are cheaper quality uh, units that are not, they're only good to one and a half to one, something like that. And the uh, other uh, attenuators that you see here are the mini circuits, and those are good to about 20 dB return loss, something like 1.1 to 1, whatever it is, um, instead of one and a half to one. And uh, so that's what we're using, and uh, the results show some ripple because uh, with 30 dB of loss, or 29 if you wish, uh, the after normalization, the noise floor is of course raised up um, to a peak of uh, about 35 dB there. Uh, and you see lots of ripple on the 20 dB uh, attenuators, but that's uh, simply because it's getting close. This is 5 dB uh, per division, by the way. And it's getting close to the um, leakage level, so you're getting some beat notes there. But anyway, you see that the 14 dB return loss is a good clear up to 1500 megs on the um, attenuator that, uh, I mean, excuse me, the 75 ohm load. And the 50 ohm load, however, by 450 is uh, right around 19 or 20 dB return loss, and then uh, degrades from there up to a one and a half to one by 1500 or so. So that's uh, not as not as good as uh, we'd like to see, but it was cheap. But <laughs> I'm cheap. Um, but the attenuators are fine. And we were looking at another attenuator earlier, and that attenuator, attenuator was this 50 watt unit that's made by uh, Bird. It has 30 dB of attenuation. You can see that here, and you can see that it uh, degrades somewhat in um, attenuation as we get up there around, uh, oh, I don't know, 1200 megs, uh, 1400 megs, thereabouts. And uh, so uh, we're, we're wondering about the match, but uh, the match looks like it's fairly decent. It's uh, less than one and a half to one all the way across that range actually improves in the 900 meg region. So I would gather there's either some resonance cross coupling uh, in the uh, unit or possibly some capacitive coupling. Uh, down in lower frequencies, using this for a low pass filter, that we looked at earlier. This is a 30 meg uh, low pass filter made by Viking. And uh, as you see, uh, there's some spurs in there uh, at the higher frequencies because uh, there must be some resonances there. 
Um, that's the curve that we see, and it's uh, quite good. 0 0.24, 0 0.25, uh, minus 79, minus uh, 51 uh, dB of uh, loss in the low regions there, up to 110 megahertz from uh, 10 megahertz. And the match is good uh, over the range, too. Uh, the match is good uh, to about 38 megahertz, it looks like. And that's about where the roll-off starts, by the way. There's a slight uh, depression of the gain, or the loss starts going up about there. And a closer view of the what was on the screen earlier, um, we have these various resonances at uh, 65, 685, 1073, uh, 1090, and 1170 megahertz. But they're pretty far down, 60 dB, seven, and the worst case is 41 dB or so. So at least in the areas that I've uh, explored here, I think that the uh, version uh, 107 firmware has improved this instrument uh, significantly and is uh, definitely worth doing if you uh, happen to own this instrument.